2020 school year, every Arizona teacher will have received a cumulative raise of 20%. Well, it seemed exactly to be what teachers were asking for, a 20% raise. But just one week after the governor made that promise, teachers turned down that offer and vote to walk out. Good evening. I'm political editor Dennis Welch, and this is Politics Unplugged. And joining us now to talk about what happens next is Noah Corvallis. He is a teacher and also one of the organizers of the Red for Ed movement. And thank you very much for joining us. So first of all, you know, what happens next? Uh, you guys vote for a walk uh, mm -hmm. a walkout on Thursday. You're going to have some walk-ins on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. What are you expecting on Thursday? So on Thursday, we will not be present at our schools. Our walkout will begin there. We're looking at the logistics of where we'll be. I think we'll be at the Capitol that day rallying, getting teachers together, and a, a standing up is essentially what we'll be doing and taking action. Do you expect, we know there was, you know, you guys were counting, you know, tens of thousands of people with these walk-ins, uh, these prior demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Do you expect enough teachers to walk out to shut down schools, school districts? You know, with a 78% vote, I do. And we're looking at some of the actions that we've had, like the walk-in you mentioned. We had over 100,000 people participate in our most recent walk-in. So we have a, a huge base of support all across the state right now. And that 78% vote that we saw last night just proves that even further. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the vote here mm -hmm. first. You know, 78%, I've seen some questions online from teachers who were questioning the validity of that vote. This was obviously done, uh, you know, uh, you know, by, by volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, people stuffing paper ballots into shoe boxes, into cardboard boxes mm -hmm. out there. Um, people were concerned about a lack of transparency. Have you seen this? And, and what would you say to address that issue? You know, I don't think there's a lack of transparency in this. We had a historic vote. We had a vote all across the state for three days where every single educator and school employee in this entire state was able to cast a vote and say, this is what I would like to do. It was ran by teachers, and, and to me, that, that's who should be running this vote. I mean, they have no interest in this other than themselves and their students. And so I, I think it was an incredible vote and an incredible uh, a feat that we did to, to have that significant vote all across the state. Okay, now let's go backwards uh, a little bit here. Governor offers up a 20% raise. Why wouldn't you take it? I think a lot of people who are maybe watching this or reading this from the from the outside, you know, they they would love to have a 20% raise. And mm -hmm. here here you guys are turning it all down. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's not a 20% raise because there's no there's no sustainable funding source for it. So what it is is essentially an empty promise of, hey, we'll get you. 20%, here's what I can do for you right now. So without that fundable or that sustainable revenue source and funding source, we're left just guessing at what this really would look like. So the bottom line is it doesn't do enough for our kids and colleagues. It's not doing enough. It's not moving the needle. We put out our demands and as educators, we know what works and that's what works. That's what we need to see is movement on those five demands. It's, it's not happening with this plan. Okay, so what do you guys want? What would stave off this strike? You've obviously given basically the governor a one week's notice, mm -hmm. a warning on this. How could this be avoided? How could you know this action be stopped at this point? Yeah. Well, he refuses to, to have any sort of conversation with us right now. And we've been very clear. What we need is we need a change. And the change that we think, or that we know as educators, that we need to see is those five demands. We need to see movement on those five demands. We need to see conversation on those five demands that involves us. Right now, we haven't seen any so of that. So remind our viewers, go through those five demands. Yeah, so our five demands really fall under two main umbrellas here. So our per pupil funding is atrocious. We're underfunding our students. So the, the first main umbrella is funding our students and funding our schools. And the second one is ensuring that every single employee educators, bus drivers, the cafeteria staff, your English teachers are paid a competitive wage. Right now we're not. And so that's where you see that 20% pay increase because that puts us on par with Utah, New Mexico, Colorado. We're not gonna be neck and neck, but we're at least in the, in the game. And right now we're hemorrhaging teachers to those states. So, so those are the two main focuses, increasing school funding, and student funding and increasing the wages that our school employees are So how paid. much is that going to cost? Uh, Joe Thomas, president of the uh, Arizona Education Association, was talking about a billion dollars restored uh, mm -hmm. to K-12 funding. Is that what you're looking Th at? Those are the cuts that, we've, that we're missing since 2008. So that, that's funding that we're missing. So, so yes. you'd like to see that restored before, uh, before you would call off this action? We need to see at least movement in that direction right now. And I can't say, you know, this number would call it off because we have an organization now of over 46,000 members. We have a leadership team that involves seven 
seven other educators and myself, and we would need to have serious conversations with everybody at the table on so that. So how long does this action take? Uh, you know, last night they were talking about it was open-ended, mm -hmm. uh, but in reality, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of teachers such as yourself, we've talked, they don't, you don't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming you don't have a lot of money in reserves to pay yeah. your bills moving forward. There is no real strike fund mm -hmm. uh, or walkout fund in this case, um, like other unions across the, across the country might have. Yeah. How long can this be sustained? You know, I, I think what will answer that question is the same thing that's answered all these questions and moved the needle this far. The educators will be in, in tune with those voices, we'll be seeing their responses, we'll be seeing who's at the Capitol, and, and they'll let us know. And I think as long as we keep our eyes on that and we're always in touch, we'll, we'll know exactly what we need to do. And that, that's never proven us wrong so far. Okay, now we've also, you've also said that you want to meet with the governor. Uh, mm -hmm. The governor doesn't seem very inclined to meet with you, your group. No. Um, he has called a political theater. He has pointed to the fact that Arizona Education Association has already weighed in on the governor's race, mm -hmm. endorsing Democrat, uh, you know, uh, David Garcia, uh, who is one of the, uh, one, one of the Democratic uh, candidates in that primary. Yeah. Uh, what makes you expect that he would change his mind? And meet well, with you. we've set a walkout date right now. He needs to respond to that. It's his job to respond to that. It's his job to respond to educators and students. He needs to do that. Regardless of what he wants to call this, he needs to respond to educators. Well, he has responded, and he did respond on Twitter. I want to read that right now. Mm -hmm. It says, no one wants to see teachers strike. If schools shut down, our kids are the ones who lose out. We work side by side with the education community to develop a sustainable plan to give teachers a 20% raise by 2020. We are getting close to the end of the school year. If you walk out, I mean, you know, could graduations be delayed? Uh, would extra, you know, extra school, you know, school mm -hmm. days be added on? Um, you know, what do you see happening here. You know, I agree with him on the point that no one wants to see teachers strike, but I don't want to see teachers leave the state. I don't want to see my students study out of 25-year-old textbooks. I don't want to see another broken desk in a classroom with a leaky ceiling. Mm -hmm. So he needs to move. He needs to make this right for us. The biggest disservice that the educators could do right now is not to walk out of their classrooms, but to not walk out and to not fight. We have the power right now. We have the momentum. We need to make change in this moment. That's what needs to happen. I mean, what do you hear back now? Obviously, you guys feel you have a mandate, 78% vote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of, lot of folks that are out there, but that is not a united front. There's still about a quarter of the teachers who cast ballots yesterday um, is saying that they're not in support of a strike. Mm -hmm. um, what are you hearing from them today? You know, I think they're watching with a lot of interest on these next steps, and I think what's going to be incredibly encouraging, and I was talking to a teacher in a rural area the other day, she said, don't expect us to, you know, be there on the walk-ins. Don't expect us to be right at the front of this charge. But she says, when you guys take that action and walk out, we'll be there with you in solidarity. So I think that's a big piece of this right now, where as this movement grows, we're reaching new areas. We're making a really deliberate effort to do that and include them and organize all areas across the state. And I think as this grows and we get closer to Thursday, you're going to see that. So we're going to be very deliberate about doing that and making some of the points we're talking about right now with the, with the governor's proposal. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. It doesn't so, do enough for us. So if the, let's say the governor just doesn't sit down with you, moves forward with his plan as it is right now. The legislature passes that. Do you guys then move forward with a ballot initiative uh, in November to get something up? So right now, we're looking at this action. We're so focused on this legislative session right now and so focused on these next couple these next couple days, really. That, that's where my focus is right now. Okay, I mean, would you even have time to get something on the ballot? You know, I, I can't speculate at it right now because, like I said, I'm just so focused on, on these next couple of days. That, that's where I'm investing my energy right now is just focusing on what does... Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week look like building up to that? And what does this weekend look like? How are we, how are we preparing for those days of action? That, that's what I'm looking at. And you yourself have been, now, have, have, you know, you've been, you know, one of the leading faces of the Red mm -hmm. for Ed movement out there. Now you are, uh, you know, getting a lot of attention for, you know, your, your past saying you're just a political operative. Mm -hmm. You're doing this for political reasons to take down uh, the governor to give him trouble in his reelection yeah. this fall. Explain your past connections and what you've done politically. Yeah, so the biggest thing that the governor's concerned about is that I manage a campaign for a super, superintendent of public instruction candidate. And if you look at the platform and if you look at my past work and, and the things I've done within the education community, publishing different um, academic uh, research articles, as well as that campaign, my, my focus is always the same. How do we improve schools in the United States and in Arizona mm -hmm. so that we can benefit the future of our kids. So, th so that's really what all my focus is on. How do we improve schools for 
educators and students and families and, and the future of this nation. And so if you look through anything I've done, including that, that political work, including that academic work, it all centers around how do we make this better. So uh, again, I also want to ask you, are you worried about public opinion turning on you? There was a lot of support for the governor's plan. I think over 70 percent were when they were polled uh, said that they liked this 20 by 20 plan that he is mm -hmm. putting out. Um, do you worry if you move forward with this action that public opinion may turn against you and your group? I, I actually think the opposite right now. I think that public opinion is siding with us more and more in these last few days because discussions like this are taking place. Well, we're seeing that this, this 20 by 20 proposal, as he puts it, is, is really, it, it has no weight to it. It's just empty promises right now. And I think more and more of the community is seeing that. And so I don't think we're losing support. I think we're actually continuing to gain support. And you can look at um, our actions, like the walk-in, hundred over 100,000, over 100,000 people participated in that action. I mean, that's significant. Mm -hmm. that, that's incredible to have that show of community support. And I, on my campus, it's it's palpable. The, the community is really behind this. All right, well, that's all the time we have for this segment. Thanks for stopping by, yeah. We will be talking again, this issue not over yet, but we do have more politics unplugged coming up just ahead, trying to p protect kids' care. And Tuesday is election day here in Arizona as voters head to the polls to decide who will replace Trent Franks with Democrats launching their strongest Showing ever in CD8. We'll take a look at the numbers right here on Politics Unplugged. Arizona teachers walk out. Everything you need to know in the AC Family News app and on acfamily.com slash acschools. From 3TV and CBS 5, Arizona's family. More local news, more original content, more investigations, more news you care about. Your number one story on your number one screen, anytime, anywhere. Free TV, CBS 5, Arizona's family. When you've had one too many, you make bad decisions. When this happens, pick up the phone and make the right decision. Got nailed? Get Learner and Row. Learner and Row is the way to go. Call 977-1900. It's Empire Today's biggest sale. The 50-50-50 sale. 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. That's right. Half off your entire project. You can save thousands. Empire's 50-50-50 sale won't last long. Don't miss 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. It's going to be a good day. Because at Ross, you got the trends everyone wants. For a fraction of what you'd pay elsewhere. Ross has all the latest looks for so much less. So you can get the styles you love and still save big. So to get more trend for less spend, you know what to do. You've got to go to Ross. As long as there is fear, as long as there is curiosity, as long as there are undiscovered corners of the earth, and as long as there is willingness and desire, then you are capable of more. Right now, be the all-new BMW X3 for as low as $469 a month. Unplugged. Our hot topic tonight, another issue that could strain the budget, kids care. This is a health insurance plan that covers low-income children who are not eligible for other access programs. Right now, the federal government covers the cost of that program, but will enrollment would be frozen if even one penny of federal dollars stopped flowing in. Now, there is a bill in front of the legislature to keep that from happening, but also discussions to make sure that freeze stays in place. And joining us now to talk about this is Dana Namark with the Children's Action Alliance. Now, I want to talk about that here in a second, mm -hmm. but I do want to give you a chance to kind of explain uh, some of the numbers here when it comes to education and the governor's uh, uh, plan to give teachers a 20% raise uh, by 2020. You're at, your group does a lot of research on this. You know the numbers. Right. You heard our first guest here. He said that this is an unsustainable plan. Right. You agree with that? I do, and I understand why the teachers have voted to walk out. 
Ducey's plan is really a PR plan right now. It's not a financial plan. We've looked at all the numbers. There's a lot of moving money around from place to place, but there's no sustainable revenue. And we've been down this road before. Um, I've been a budget wonk for 30 years here in Arizona, and I've seen over and over politicians promising we can invest in schools without new revenue, without raising taxes, and over and over those promises fade and budgets get cut. So the teachers have done their homework. They know that. Well, the governor, he's had his budget people go through this nice and he's projecting big revenue increases in the future Arizona is a fast-growing state why don't you trust the numbers why don't you trust his projections well his projections are very optimistic but even if they hold true he's still saying he has to find money other places so he's telling legislators no other priorities can be funded nothing else for your constituents like support for the arts services mm -hmm. for people with developmental disabilities funding for university students so we know that general fund growth goes up and then it goes down when the economy slows and when that happens education budgets will get cut what we need is a dedicated new revenue source to make sure these commitments go forward and what is that new revenue source are we talking about a tax increase is we that the only way to really get this done we are talking about a tax increase or eliminating tax credits reversing tax cuts that have been made for people who can afford to pay uh, closing loopholes, all of those things. And we've put forward many lists of options. The legislators have those. Governor Ducey has those. It's up to them to put a plan together that actually works. All right, now let's move on to the Kids Care Program. Mm -hmm. Just give us a brief synopsis. What's at stake here? What's happening? So Kids Care covers almost 28,000 children in our state. It provides affordable coverage. All the families pay premiums. And Governor Ducey has declared his support for this. In January, he scolded Congress and said, you guys aren't moving fast enough to provide your funding. Now they have. They have funded Kids Care for six years. But we're set to have an automatic freeze, meaning no new kids can be enrolled on the very day that federal funding drops. And it's only dropping to 90%. So for every 10 cents the state puts in, we get 90 cents from the federal taxes we have already paid. And we need that freeze to come off the table. So when does that federal drop happen and why is it happening? It happens because the federal funding will phase down slightly okay. over the next six years and it would happen October 1, 2019. Mm -hmm. So on that day we would have an automatic freeze. What we're asking is, has no cost for the legislature or for the budget this year. We're asking just to remove that automatic trigger and instead to put kids care in the regular budget process so legislators can consider whether they want to appropriate state funding to prevent a freeze. Now there's a bill at the legislature that would remove that requirement. Where is that bill right now? It's stuck. Um, uh -oh. It was a House bill sponsored by Regina Cobb mm -hmm. and that got stuck in the Senate. Then there was uh, uh, another version put forward by Senator Kate Brophy McGee, and that's stuck in the House. So we're asking Governor Ducey to use his leadership to get it unstuck and make well, sure he why, follows up on his why priority. Why would something for like this care. be stuck? This seems to me it would be, you know, you're talking about Republicans here that are uh, putting forward this bill. It seems right. like it would have wide uh, bipartisan support. What's the issue? Uh, I don't know what the issue is. It's all behind closed doors. Nobody is standing up to admit why they're holding it up. So we're really calling on all legislators and the governor to get it moving again. And the budget wonks at the legislature say it will only cost a million dollars that first year when the federal funding dips. It doesn't make any sense to freeze out thousands of kids from health care for the sake of a million dollar budget item. So any, any, any optimism on your part? Are you hearing any, any, any uh, movement on this? Is this is something that could get done in the budget when, uh, when they finally put that together, which could be in the next week or two? Yes, we are optimistic. We know that Arizonans across the state, across political parties, strongly support kids care, believe in affordable health care coverage for children. They know kids need to be healthy to learn in school, to succeed, to grow up healthy so we are optimistic all right well it's all time we have for that so we're gonna have to take a quick break but thanks again for stopping by but we do have more politics unplugged just ahead we'll find out what our panel has to say about that planned teacher walkout and what they say teachers are not understanding about the budget that's next on politics unplugged whoa nelly yes big bacon belly onion lassos can you wrangle it Kiss by the flames, you can walk away whistling. It's the Western Bacon Cheeseburger.
That's the call of Carl's. Pick up. Tired of spring cleaning those old dingy floors? Call Express Flooring today for free and home shopping. Just announced, get a spring explosion of savings up to 68% and no interest until 2020. Call 800 Express. Title Max makes it easy to turn your title into cash. Just go to TitleMax.com. Find out how much you can get. Using TitleMax.com, I got $1,400. $3,200. TitleMax.com got me $9,700. Best of all, most credit types are approved. Next time you need cash, try Title Max for rate. Try Title Max for the amount you need. Find out why so many people are saying, I got my title back with Title Max. Get your title back with Title Max. We know car accidents don't always happen Monday through Friday. If you're hurt in a car wreck, we're available for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. But you don't have to wait until Monday to get the help you need now. You've got a ferocious taste for action and an affinity for four diamond comfort. Fortunately, we satisfy on all accounts. At Fort McDowell Casino, April showers bring up to $130,000 worth of cash and prizes. It's raining riches. Ten winners every Friday. Grand prize, a guaranteed share of $10,000. Go for it all at the Fort. Fort McDowell Casino, Highway 87, two miles north of Shea Boulevard. If you haven't seen Universal Studios Hollywood lately, you won't believe it. So much has changed. Everywhere you turn, there's something new and unexpected. The fun has never been this bold. And the adventure has never been more real. It's a universe beyond anything you imagined. Come see what you're missing. Universal Studios Hollywood. You'll be amazed at what we've become. Unplugged. It's now time to talk it out with our partners from First Strategic with us today, Kurt Davis and Marcus Delartino. Thanks for joining us. Thank Guys, the first question of this walkout, uh, so you saw 78% of the teachers uh, who cast ballot vote to walk out of the classroom. Is this going to work as a strategy to get what they want with the governor? We, first of all, you mean strike. The walkout, I think, is the more gentle PR term that's being used, but so that most people understand it's a strike. Listen, we don't, uh, this is a short segment, and we're not gonna, I'm not gonna have enough time to refute every fact and figure, so let's give everybody what this is really going on, the political theater behind here. And the fact of the matter is that the Democratic Party is tied up with the AEA. Just like the Republican Party's tied up with the Chamber of Commerce, I'll take that criticism, the AEA is that arm equivalent for the Democratic Party. They believe that if they do not get a solution to this problem, the Democrats have a stronger edge going into the general election against the statewide officials, Doug Ducey out from the ticket all the way down. So I doubt, frankly, from political theater standpoint they want to reach a solution the governor right out of the gate said okay I'll give you 20 percent and they're refusing it and that should well, be your first indication well, I wouldn't say the, the governor way. I wouldn't say the governor right out the gate offered up the 20 percent it took it took a lot of pressure and a lot of state they, and they refused yeah, it. yeah that it, should but, be your first indicator that they are not wanting a solution sure, to this but, problem. It, but it wasn't right out the gate and you're you know ignoring it. I mean JLBC came out with an analysis of this of this plan is this not one. there's always and, a disagreement between OSPB and JLBC but I also don't I don't remember any of, I don't remember any of the advocates or the media sure. talking about Janet Napolitano's rosy forecast. There was. And no, 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 no. office has validated yeah. the numbers. Oh, the yeah. Three major so, universities have validated the, the numbers. numbers. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's it's the same old, same old. Yeah, but JLBC, they're nonpartisan. And just because, you know, you're... So, you're you, and you're you're bringing up Janet Napolitano with her rosy projections. Did you were you trustworthy of them ten years ago when she was doing it? And yes, if because not, why you are you trusting this government? Because you have to project numbers. But when you the one thing that's different, Dennis, is mm -hmm. when you actually give raises in a budget, that becomes baseline budget. So that mm -hmm. pressure is permanent. And 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 I don't remember anybody jumping up and down 
when this first came out saying, we want to know, we've always decided that we are going to be the deciders on what the revenue sources are. Mm -hmm. The issue was, do you want a 20% raise or don't you want a 20%? Well, the, they say was they wanted funding for school as well. It was beyond just the 20% raise. And which they also included, did not want to see cuts to other programs. Which is included, it's included in the in plan. The but let's yes. talk about what's next in here because everybody wants to know what's in Ducey's plan. What's the AEA's next proposal? And I'm telling you right now that they're going to do an initiative to go to the ballot for a tax increase. Which tax increase that is, I don't know yet. Property tax, sales tax, could be any variety. But that Income. is their plan to go to the ballot to get a tax increase, which they will say is a de dedicated source of revenue for these raises. But it is a tax increase when there is a plan on the table to do the exact same thing without. And I will tell you, being a voter initiative lock on this is a bad idea on how to set policy in the state of but Arizona. But what other options would they have to raise revenue on this? this they is, don't this is have to raise this revenues. That is up to the legislature and the governor. That's not their responsibility. The and legislature and, and the governor, you know it's impossible, almost impossible, to get a, to get a tax increase out of that body because of the two-thirds requirement are, to do it. There are revenue sources other than tax increases. Mm -hmm. There are other revenue sources. Sure, and there are some in this governor's plan. Correct. But, but, but there are still other options related to that. But to say never, again, that's not their role. That's not their role. That's the role of the legislature and the governor. What they should be saying is, is we want to get this 20% done. Mm -hmm. And how do you get it done? And, and, and again, and our nomenclature is important in this. Uh, Nelson Mandela didn't do a hunger walkout. He did a hunger strike. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest with people about what's going on here. The one of your previous guests has been a paid political operative. But he's also let's a be, teacher. But, but he's also a teacher. About and we were honest. I think we asked him about that. He talked about that. It's okay. out there. It's transparent. Here's and people what, can decide for themselves but Dennis, on this. Here's why but we're fired up. Because last night, your comp a competitor news station interviewed two paid lobbyists from the AEA who they did not disclose were paid lobbyists from the A, who said that they were concerned parents, which mm -hmm. is a flat out lie. Uh, listen, let's all be honest during this conversation and the solution will take place a lot faster. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't speak to that. I don't know about I that. I know, it wasn't this news station. <laughs> so what does the governor do now? Does he sit down, does he meet with them, or does he move forward with this plan and pass this budget out, see what happens? Look, the governor, let me be clear about this. The governor has been meeting with superintendents throughout the state constantly, either by phone or in meeting nights weekends all day during the day to come to this solution so, so to say that he hasn't met with people from the education community it was a false narrative being being pursued but i would expect something to be start moving next week at the legislature all right i gotta uh, make a hard pivot here and actually actually got to talk a little bit about the cd8 race because yes that is actually happening this week on tuesday um we saw a poll from uh from oh mike noble and his poll shows that let's go up 10 points now normally you know in, in, in any other district that'd be great but in this district seems like a pretty slim margin is she going to be able to win she's going to be fine look at the the numbers coming out from early ballot uh, returns already signify what is actually happening in that district. She's going to win. We are spending an inordinate amount of time on this election because it's a special election because everybody wants to make something more out of it than it's not. It's got Luke Air Force Base in it. She's going to win. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on something that's a fun, m it's, far more fun she, race. Let's talk about Martha McSally versus Kirsten Cinema. That right, at least Kurt, is a competition. Kurt, Kurt, like, basically, really short answer here. She's going to win by more than double digits. Then it's going to. It'll be right around ten. All right. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for this week. And be sure to join us next week for more politics unplugged.